Dawn had barely tinted the sky orange when Matt stepped out of the house, an old backpack hanging from one shoulder and a safety helmet in the other hand. He was the picture of dedication, a man whose calloused hands and sun-baked skin told the story of countless days of work and construction. Even when the heat became almost unbearable, he stood firm, rising above the rubble and fresh concrete with the determination of someone who knew that every drop of sweat was another brick in the building of the life he was constructing. Come on, Matt. That beam won't lift itself, shouted the foreman, a mountain of a man with a voice that cut through the noise of the machines. Matt nodded, adjusting his gloves before joining the other workers. All right, guys, on my count. Three, two, one, now. The beam rose, heavy and imposing, each man beneath it an atlas carrying the world on his shoulders. However, there was a weight that Matt carried that was not made of steel or stone, but of longing and worry. Susan, the woman he shared his life with, seemed more and more like a stranger, a shadow moving through the house in the rare hours when their paths crossed. They lived under the same roof but in different worlds, separated by work shifts that rarely aligned. At night, when Matt returned to the silent house, he often found small reminders from Susan, a note on the fridge saying there was food for him in the microwave, a receipt for something she thought they needed. They were like messages in bottles cast into the sea, desperate attempts at communication in a routine that kept them apart. I miss you, he murmured one night, his words disappearing into the emptiness of the kitchen as he heated a frozen lasagna. Do you miss me too? And that night, as the city slept and the stars blinked outside, indifferent to human dramas, Matt wondered if the work he took so much pride in would be enough to build the bridge that would bring them back together. He didn't know, but he was willing to keep trying, one cement block at a time, one word at a time, until their divergent worlds met. Twilight cast its last golden rays through the living room window as Matt, with a mix of anxiety and hope, held a stuffed teddy bear to his chest. It was a small gesture, a soft and fluffy charm meant to bridge the growing gap between him and Susan. He had chosen the teddy bear with great care, its button eyes gleaming with a tenderness he desperately wished to see reflected in his beloved's eyes. Look what I brought for you, Susan, Matt said, trying to infuse warmth into his voice that the fatigue of the day had nearly stolen. Susan looked up from her book, regarding the teddy bear with a disdainful look. Another stuffed animal, Matt? Is that all you think I deserve? Her voice, sharp as a paper cut, carried a disappointment that ran deeper than the issue of the gift. I thought, I thought you liked them, Matt stammered, feeling the heat rise in his cheeks, a mixture of shame and sadness. I liked them when I was five, she replied dryly. Matt, when are you going to learn? I want something that shows you care, something real, something expensive. Matt swallowed hard, the weight of Susan's words as heavy as the concrete he molded daily. Susan, I'm trying. Money is tight and... Then maybe you should try harder, she interrupted, her eyes returning to the pages before her, as if the conversation were already over. Matt stepped away the teddy bear now hanging limp in his hand. He felt diminished, reduced to less than he was, less than he strove to be. The demand for expensive gifts, the insensitivity to the efforts he made every day, all painted a clear picture of Susan's lack of empathy. He left the stuffed teddy bear on the couch's arm, a small symbol of the vast chasm between what he could offer and what Susan desired. Her words, like cold steel, cut deeper than any tool he had ever wielded. And in that moment, with the smell of his sweat still lingering despite his efforts to rid himself of it, Matt realized that perhaps it wasn't just his scent that Susan rejected, but the essence of who he was. The room was filled with palpable tension. The walls seemed to absorb the discord instead of the usual silence. Matt felt a tightness in his chest, each breath a reminder of the disconnect between him and Susan. He had tried again, taking a long shower in an attempt to wash away the layers of cement and sweat. 
but the scent of his work persisted, a mark of his humble condition. Susan, I'm doing everything I can, Matt said, his voice trembling with a vulnerability he rarely allowed to show. It's not enough, Matt, Susan retorted, her words as sharp as the stone chips Matt carved every day. Look at you, at us. We're stagnant while other couples are moving forward. Do you see what they give to their girlfriends? Jewelry, trips, and me? I get stuffed animals in the eternal smell of asphalt. Matt looked at his own hands, the grease stains under his nails that wouldn't come off no matter how hard he scrubbed. I'm trying to give us a better life. I can't perform miracles. The issue isn't what you can do, but what you should have done, she said, looking away with an exasperated sigh. You know, there are men out there who could give me what I deserve. Men who don't leave a trail of dirt wherever they go. Matt felt a mixture of anger and despair. Then maybe you should be with them if that's what you want. The coldness in her eyes as she stared at him was something he had never seen before. Maybe I should. The heated argument culminated in a cutting silence, only the sound of Susan's suitcase closing at the door. Susan locked herself in the bedroom and refused to speak to Matt. That night, he slept on the couch. And what would you do in Matt's place? Would you try to win Susan back? Or would you give up on your marriage? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. However, Matt didn't want to give up on Susan, so he found another job to be able to give better gifts to his wife and try to win her back. The clock struck midnight when Matt, exhausted, exchanged his construction helmet for a waiter's apron. The bags under his eyes were as deep as the foundations he helped dig during the day, but the promise he had made to himself kept him on his feet. He would give Susan the world she desired, no matter the cost. In the restaurant, amid the clinking of silverware and the murmur of conversations, Matt served tables with an automatic smile, his hands still rough from construction, delicately holding wine glasses and gourmet dishes. The tips he collected were for the pearl necklace Susan had wished for, or for the designer purse she had casually left open on her computer's website. You're working too hard, son, the chef said to him one night, looking at him with concern. Is this girl really worth all of this? Matt just nodded, hiding the insecurity gnawing at him. She's worth every effort, he replied, though a voice in the back of his mind questioned if that was true. Upon returning home in the early hours of the morning, the silence of the apartment greeted him like an accusation. He found Susan sleeping peacefully, oblivious to the pain and sacrifice her comfort demanded. When he approached, her nose wrinkled, and even in her sleep, she turned away, as if his scent was an annoyance even in her dreams. You're sleeping on the couch tonight, she murmured one night when he tried to lie down next to her. I can't sleep with that food smell. Matt looked at the couch, his new bed, and a heavy sigh escaped his lips. I just want to make you happy, Susan, he whispered even though he knew she couldn't hear. The distance between them grew with each night he spent on the couch, every penny saved turning into another brick in the invisible wall that separated them. Susan's ingratitude made the air heavier, each breath a reminder that despite all his efforts, he was failing not only to win her love, but also to maintain his own dignity. Mornings came with the pale light of the sun, finding Matt asleep, not in the warmth of an embrace, but in the coldness of the rough fabric of the couch, his face marked by the lines of his surrender. The dawn lights had barely begun to seep through the blinds when Matt felt the world spin dangerously. The last few months had been an unrelenting marathon of cement, bricks, and customer service, with each day stretching thinner than the one before. Exhaustion had settled into his bones, a constant companion he tried to ignore. But on that day, his body refused to be commanded. Matt struggled to maintain composure, but just the thought of having to work at the restaurant later, the smell of food that had once been pleasant now made him nauseous. At the construction site, the tools felt as heavy as lead in his hands, but dizziness struck him like a sledgehammer, and the world darkened around him. 
When he regained consciousness, Matt found himself in a hospital bed, tubes and wires drawing a map of his collapse. Severe anemia, the doctor said, the words sounding distant like the echo of a long, dark tunnel. You need to slow down, Matt. Your body is running on empty. Calls to Susan piled up like the bills he feared he couldn't pay. Mrs. Susan, please come to the hospital. Matt needs you, the nurse insisted on the phone, the urgency in her voice barely concealed. But the responses were always the same, cold and distant. I can't, I have plans, or he'll be fine, I have a party tonight. Lying in the hospital bed, Matt felt loneliness enveloping him, a cold and relentless fog. He turned to the wall, the tears he had struggled to contain finally tracing a warm path down his face. The sounds of laughter and music reached him through Susan's social media updates, a cruel contrast to the constant beeping of the heart rate monitors. At this critical moment, when he needed someone the most, Susan chose the bright lights of her social life over the dim glow of the monitor by Matt's bedside. The betrayal was not only emotional, but also a profound neglect, an abandonment that spoke louder than any vow of in sickness and in health they had never made. And as Matt faced the reality of his fragile health and a broken heart, Susan's life continued, oblivious to the man she once loved, now forgotten in a hospital bed. After days of sterile whiteness and the hum of hospital equipment, Matt's home was supposed to be a sanctuary of rest and recovery. But as the key turned in the lock and the door swung open, a sense of desolation enveloped him like a cold breeze. The walls, once witnesses to laughter and shared plans, now seemed to guard dark secrets. Matt took a few unsteady steps down the hallway, leaning on walls that seemed to vibrate with echoes of a life he no longer recognized. The fragility of his body was still evident, a sensation of lightness that was not freedom, but rather an inner void. He expected silence, the tranquility needed for healing. But what his ears caught was a feminine laughter, relaxed and intimate, followed by a deep and unfamiliar male voice. Standing at the doorway of the living room, Matt spotted Susan, whose posture revealed an intimacy she had never shared with him. Beside her, a man exuding an air of casual arrogance, adorned in expensive attire and a watch that glittered with the disdain of someone who had it all. They didn't notice Matt immediately, so absorbed were they in each other. Susan. Matt's voice broke the air with a vulnerability that clashed against the confidence the situation demanded. She turned, and the look of surprise was soon replaced by a mantle of coldness. Matt, you should be at the hospital. What are you doing here? I live here, Matt replied, the sharp pain in his voice. Or does that not mean anything anymore? The man stood up, a shadow of irritation passing over his face. Susan, who is this guy? Someone who doesn't matter anymore, she retorted, looking at Matt with a disregard that pierced him more deeply than any scalpel. Someone who is stuck in the past. Matt felt the weight of the world on his shoulders. So that's it he said, his voice low. You left me alone in the hospital when I needed you the most to be with another guy. You cheated on me. Matt, you were never enough, Susan confessed without a trace of remorse. And I can't wait for someone who will never give me what I want. She approached and with a coldness that only true indifference can provide, took the man's arm. Let's go, she said. And without a backward glance, without an apology, she left the house they had once shared. Matt stood there, alone, in the silence that followed. The home he knew was shattered, and with it, the illusion of a love he thought would last forever, that he could restore. The betrayal was not just infidelity. It was the final abandonment of a heart he had offered so completely. Matt found himself in a whirlwind of solitude and financial obligations, a storm left in Susan's wake. The apartment, once a shared refuge, now resonated with the echoes of his own debts. He stared at the ceiling at night, counting the cracks as if they were the debts Susan had accumulated in his name, each one a reminder of broken promises and betrayed trust. 
With an urgent need to rebuild his life, but without the strength to return to construction work, Matt took on more shifts as a bartender at the neighborhood's small restaurant, a warm place that contrasted with the coldness of his situation. His hands, which had once molded construction concrete, now skillfully danced between bottles and shakers, with each movement trying to forget a little more of his past. It was in the midst of the restaurant's hustle and bustle, amidst the clinking of glasses, that Diana and her grandmother appeared as beacons in his storm. Diana, with her gentle smile and encouraging words, brought orders for dishes he prepared with an almost forgotten dedication. Diana had been hired as a cook, and her grandmother came to the restaurant every day to see her granddaughter and dine, because she didn't like solitary meals. She felt alive watching the people in the restaurant. You have hands of an artist, Matt. Each drink is a masterpiece, Diana would say, and for a moment, he believed it. Her grandmother, a silver-haired lady with a penetrating gaze, shared stories from her own life, interwoven with wisdom and a perspective that only the years can bring. Heart wounds take time to heal, but they heal, she would murmur, passing him a plate of homemade food. And in the meantime, feed both your body and your soul. Night after night, Diana's conversations and her grandmother's advice became the balm for Matt's scars. The meals they shared were not just nourishment for the body, but also for the heart. Each word, each act of kindness, slowly wove the net that pulled him from the depths of his despair. With time and unexpected support, the debts were paid off, not just the monetary ones, but also the emotional ones. Matt found in that restaurant more than just a job. He found a fresh start, and gradually, the image of Susan became a distant memory, a lesson learned in the book of his life. Diana and her grandmother, with their constant presence and selfless care, showed him that sometimes healing comes from where you least expect it. As the days passed, Matt and Diana wove a tapestry of mutual understanding and support, where each thread was a word of comfort, a helping gesture, a moment of sharing. Matt shared about his failed marriage and how much he had suffered, but Diana listened to the story and understood him, and over time the restaurant became the stage for their growing closeness. On a particularly quiet evening, when the last customer bid farewell and the kitchen was already in semi-darkness, Matt and Diana sat at a table under the soft light of a lamp. The air carried a mixture of hope and uncertainty, and it was in this setting that Matt, with their hands intertwined, let slip an idea that had been warming his heart. Diana, I've been thinking, he began, his gaze steady on hers. We could share a house. I would help with the expenses, and you... Well, your meals are already the highlight of my days. Diana smiled, the idea germinating in her mind like a promising seed. You're not just talking about sharing expenses, are you? She asked, a hint of playfulness in her voice. You're talking about sharing a life. Yes, that's exactly it, he confirmed, a warmth growing inside him. And I think we can save the restaurant together, too. I... I don't just want to survive, Diana. I want to build something with you. The days that followed were a whirlwind of activity. They found a house that could be the refuge and fresh start they both needed. Matt brought his construction skills, and Diana, her innate ability to turn any space into a home. Together, they worked on the restaurant, saved up, and eventually purchased it, with each shared success strengthening the bond between them. Their union was beautiful. They walked in perfect harmony. Things started to thrive, and they set up other restaurants, building a franchise. Over time, collaboration turned into deep love, an unspoken commitment that solidified into an intimate ceremony where they exchanged vows and promises. They married beneath the dancing shadows of the trees in the restaurant's backyard, surrounded by friends and Diana's grandmother who smiled with tears in her eyes. I think love is like a recipe, Diana said in her vows, looking into Matt's eyes. A measure of patience, a pinch of adventure, and an abundance of trust. And I, 
Matt added. Promise to keep building this life with you, so that together we can find happiness in every brick we lay, in every dish we serve. And so, with hands held and hearts aligned, Matt and Diana dedicated themselves not only to each other, but also to the restaurant that had become the symbol of their union. They found happiness together, a feeling that was sweeter for being shared, stronger for being tested, and truer for being built with their own hands. Years had passed since the doors of destiny closed behind Susan, leaving her on a lonely path paved with questionable choices and shattered illusions. In contrast, for Matt, those same years had been the architect of a new life, an existence filled with love and success, alongside his companion Diana. On a gray afternoon, where heavy clouds mirrored Susan's state of mind, she entered the restaurant that was the crown jewel in Matt and Diana's empire. Worn down by time and life's choices, she could barely recognize the man Matt had become, a successful owner radiant with the joy of a life well lived. Approaching the counter, with a hesitance that betrayed her neediness, Susan could hardly believe it when Matt, with an expression of measured surprise, revealed, I'm the owner of this place. Matt, you? Susan stammered, her voice a whisper of disbelief. But how? Before he could respond, one of the waiters passed by, respectfully addressing him as boss solidifying the reality before Susan's eyes. The world she had left Matt in was a distant past, and the man before her was the embodiment of the life she had discarded. Susan was astounded that Matt had managed to become the restaurant's owner, and she felt so lost and lonely, so helpless, that she told Matt everything, and Matt listened to every word. After Susan recounted the twists and turns life had taken, she revealed that the guy Matt had seen that day at his house after leaving the hospital had abandoned her, and she was jobless and needed help. She had come into the restaurant to ask for a cleaning job. Matt also shared the twists and turns life had provided him with, telling her about Diana, until, watching the scene from a respectful distance, Diana approached with the grace and understanding that always characterized her. Susan... It's true that we're looking for more staff, not here but at one of our other restaurants, she said, her voice calm but firm. If you're interested, I can arrange an interview. Susan, absorbing the reality of her choices and the paradox of her situation, merely nodded, her words caught in her throat. I... I would like that. Thank you. As Susan walked away, Matt felt a mix of emotions. A turbulent chapter of his life was definitively closing. He turned to Diana, whose support and love had been the foundation of his new life. Do you think we did the right thing? He asked, seeking confirmation of their actions in her eyes. Yes, Diana replied, holding his hand tenderly. Life is about moving forward, and sometimes about giving others the chance to do the same. And so, in that restaurant filled with memories and promises of an even brighter future, Matt and Diana continued their lives, woven with contentment, love, and the wisdom that every choice, every path taken, was just another ingredient in the recipe of their happy and fulfilled lives. This was the story. Thank you for watching until here, and until next time.